So I think I think we have started. But we'll see how we go um, as we go along. So this is my first time having a go at this streaming thing. I'm assuming that is working. So if so, hello. Um, apparently we didn't have anyone here as yet. That is okay. I'm not expecting to really have anyone here. Um, so I'm pretty sure that all you guys can see is this screen here. I believe. I think that's how it's working. Um, what? Hang on. Let's check. Yes. Oh, actually, I can. I can go do that. Yes, but I, I probably just want to do that. Okay. Okay, so I think what you guys can see is this. So these are the cards that I've been working on for Septimus, the game that I've been um, So these are the backs of the cards here. My computer doesn't like this. It's <laughs> it's very slow, my computer, so it's struggling to do all this at the same time. And these are the backs of the cards. Um, counter, Tertius, it's, it's still going slow. <sighs> I don't know how long this will go. Um, and we've got the Septagon or Heptagon. Depending on where you look, they are called either or both. Um, the flame design is not mine. I searched for it on Google. Um, it might be under copyright. I don't know. I'll have to change that when I actually, you know, do it proper. But this is just a placeholder for now. Um, and T is for tertius because it's um, in the third circle. Um, it's tertius circulus because it's all Latin. Um, these stats are copied over from the quartus, the fourth circle, um, which is technically first. It's fourth in terms of fourth out from the center, but it's first in terms of it's the first one that you start in, um, but fourth circle out from the center. So it's easier to think about this. This, These ones are the third circle. Um, and now this thing at the centre is five sided shape, which is confusing. Um, but I started off with a four sided shape. I started off with a diamond. And then the idea is each one, I'm adding an extra line to it. So this one's a pentagon, then the next one's a hexagon, and the next one is a heptagon. Um, so it goes up to seven, which is nice. Um, because the alternative is going down in sides um going down from four to three which is easy then down to two which is not easy and one one is fine you just do a circle but how do you do a two-sided shape it doesn't really work um so that's a bit tricky um so instead i went from four up to five then up to six and then up to seven and that works fine um so that's what i've got here um and the, the idea of doing that rather than just sticking with the diamond um, is that um, so that you can tell just by looking at this side rather than having to flip it over um, which um, circular or circle it belongs to, which level, which I thought was good. Um, and it still just got me, that's fine. Um, yes, so this is one of the ones from the fourth circle. Um, there are different. Um, stat roles that you've got here so this is power this is agility this is thought this is septimus those are the four different skills that each hero has um and then this shows you which color that this particular encounter is associated with though an encounter can be drawn put anywhere on the board depending on where a person is at the time this is obviously a title. This is where um, a picture will be when I have, you know, 
someone who can design that sort of thing. I'm not an artist. Um, the, this is like the rule text. Sometimes it will be like a special thing like this, which affects how the encounter actually happens. Sometimes it will say, if you do not succeed, this happens, so bad stuff. Or if you do succeed, this happens, so good stuff, generally speaking. Um, so those are kind of the three different things it can be. Um, so this one's a special one saying that you've only got one re-roll, so less than you'd usually have unless you've got really bad stats. Um, and then a little bit of flavor text. So the challenge I actually had with designing these cards is that I had to communicate um, an encounter, like what, what is in this room, what it looks like, how you might defeat it, how it might be difficult, that sort of thing, with just this title and this little bit of flavour text. <laughs> and kind of a little bit the numbers as well, because the numbers say, okay, so for example, this one says, okay, it's going to be more difficult to do with power than it is going to be to do with thought. Um, so that tells you a little bit about it as well. Um, so, uh, and one of the things that I've actually been doing quite recently is optimizing all of the different sorts of cards for printing. So you'll notice I've got this grid now lined up and I've had to specifically do the document. Um, is it going to work well? There we go. Um, and do the document borders so that this table is exactly centered um, so that on the double side it prints exactly the same um, because this is double sided with the, the backs of the cards that you saw before um, so that's that's the idea that they're in this grid exactly and then i can cut them out easily enough is the plan um, but yeah, planning to print them out on like a cardstock or something similar, just over at Officeworks sort of thing. It is the plan. Um, actually, I mean, you could print it out on paper and that would be fun in terms of the look of it. But if you want to have cards that you can actually shuffle, which I need for these, um, then that's a bit difficult to do with paper. You can't really shuffle paper. Um, so that was important. Uh, it's doing the spinning wheel of death on me. <sighs> That's always fun. Okay. Um, let's see. Is it going to start? No, it's, it's, it's just going to keep going. Well, I'll just talk a bit. Um, or I can change. I can change what you see. Because this is quite a light point. Um, I do this, yes. Now you can see the whole screen. And now I move the screen and boom, here we go. Okay, I think this will work. Yes, though I don't know whether you can see me or not anymore. That's okay. Okay, so let's have a look at some other bits and pieces. So this is no still in pages so it does it across all the pages of course it does uh, it's nice. oh let's go into something that's not pages then let's go into numbers oh no please don't please don't tell me you're gonna be annoying as well okay oh. no i don't want the so this, there we go. Okay. So this is my list that I've been working on. Um, so I've got a list of all my items, all my encounters, um, so that I have, well, so I've got a record of all of them. I've got notes on each of them, um, because sometimes there's bits and pieces that can't fit on the card. Um, as you can see, I've got quite a few different ones here. Um, oh, those are the 
like the five or seven that I originally designed. Um, so I thought I'd start with that. Um, so yes, I've gotten up to 56. We've designed 56 cards. It says 71 there, but that's including the ones at the top that I haven't actually done yet. Um, but there needs to be 140 well up. So that's going to be 141, isn't it? Because that is counted as a row. So it's going to be 141. Yep, there we go. Um, but 140 cards. And counter cards because there's 70 spaces on the map. So, yeah, that's been a bit of work. I'm trying to do a few, get a few cards done each day, um, at least, um, which has been going fairly well so far. Let's jump back over here. Oh, no, not you. you. Here we go. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, I think it's not. Spazzing out as much anymore. Um, so there we go. Um, let's go back to just this window. <laughs> Not good here, Bethy, in the background there. Oh, she enjoys the scene. That's good. Okay. So, is it gonna, is it gonna scroll for me? No, it's gonna make me scroll for me. Okay. Hopefully it'll stop there. It's been a really doing soon. Um, but yeah, so I've got these designed. Originally I had these actually designed um, to fit a particular specification on a website that actually print, that's a print off. Um, all this sort of thing and, and like design online using their parts and, and things like that. So this was to the specifications of, of one of the cards that they were able to print. Um, because I didn't think that this would fit on a normal size card as you would get like a plain card. Um, so I wanted this, this square design. And similarly, I did the same with the item cards. I think the item cards are about a quarter this size, also square. And then I've got the encounter markers for about a quarter of the size of the item cards themselves, also square again. Um, that meant that they were all in inches because it was an American website. It was very annoying. Mm -hmm. So I was playing around with inches for ages until I figured out, oh, I'll just print them off at um, Office Works. That's fine. Um, fine for now. Anyway, <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, oh, yay. I think it. Oh, yeah, we have movement. We have movement. Okay. So, so yeah, what I've been doing, I've been doing this for all my different encounter cards and the item cards and the encounter markers as well. I've put them all into these different grids to make sure that the front and the back of the cards are all in the same spot on the page. <laughs> Which is really tricky. Um, it's less tricky for these guys because they've got all the backs are the same. Um, and there's always just like a full page of them, whereas the item cards, I have them all in the one document because there's less of them. There's 70 um, and they're smaller, so they all fit in the one document. Whereas this, I have a separate document for each circle of the encounter cards. Um, yes, oh, Cameron, it's getting there, it's getting there, oh boy, okay, um, and so that, that took a bit of time, just putting everything into a grid, um, but it's, it's saved me a lot of time later, I think. That's going to be more efficient. And it means, means I'll know for next time, you know, because hopefully this won't be the only game I design. Um, I'm hoping next time to do a more cooperative style board game because that I really enjoy that. Um, 
cool. So here's another design that I've done. Um, again, these these are copied over from the Quartus. So if you're a sync counter cards, the Quartus and counter cards, fourth circle. Um, so like the this document is with Tosh and counter cards, but I haven't started on yet, which is why they're all the same. Uh, but I've gotten them ready. So they won't actually look like this, but well, the numbers will be different, the text will be a bit different. Stop. You can start moving now. That's really good. No, it's going to keep moving. It's, uh, I don't get that. I don't, it's a bit slow. Um, but yeah, so I've been working on this for quite a while now. Here's another design coming up. Don't succeed, you miss your next turn. Compactor, I think trash compactor like Star Wars. I was thinking of putting a Star Wars quote in there, but didn't end up um, doing that. Though I have put a couple of quotes into the, for the other, some of the other flavor text, um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, which of those get picked up on? Some of those, some, some are fairly obvious, but some are a bit more obscure. Um, or particularly when you've only got a few words there because I've only got so much space on the encounter cards. Um, the item cards are even more difficult because I've less space. Um, and some of them are quite finicky in terms of what, what they do, though I try to keep them fairly simple. But yeah, there's, there's only so much you can communicate, and it's all about figuring out okay, what's, what's the most effective way of being able to communicate this in a visual way. Um, that someone can just glance at this and know what it's doing. You know. So this, you know, the information straight away is six, four, five, x. So you need to roll six or higher, four or higher, five or higher, x. Means that that one's crossed out. You can't use it. Um, so yeah, it's it's all about making that information really visible. Um, and obvious for people, which I find really interesting as part of design. Um, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think we got it now. Okay, for a moment. Anyway. Yeah, you got something posting. Um, so, yeah, and, and then all of this is when, like, when you're facing encounters, you're rolling d6, like normal six sided dice. So, if you need to roll six or higher, that's going to be very tricky if you've only got one dice, whereas if you've got two dice, then that makes it easier and all that sort of thing. Um, so, yes, that's the general idea of that. And then, if you do not succeed, your thought operates at one level lower next turn. So, you know, you start off with a certain um, number of points in each, like a certain level in each skill. So at the first level, you get one dice. At the second level, you have one dice, still have one dice, but you can also re roll that dice once. And then at the third level, you get two dice, but you still only have one re roll of, of one dice. Um, at fourth level, you can re roll two dice, and at fifth level, you get an extra dice, but still can only re roll twice. And at sixth level, you can re roll three dice, and then at seventh level, which is the highest you can get in anything, um, you get a fourth dice, but you can still only re roll three of them. Um, so, anytime, um, so when it says your thought operates one level lower next turn, so, uh, if you're at level three, and um, you usually have two dice and one re roll. Now you only have one dice and one way you roll. Um, so stuff with that. Um, is what we've got happening. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I might um, finish up there for now. Uh, I've been talking for a bit and this has been going slow. <laughs> so we'll see how that turns out in the video. Um, and see if I end up doing another one. But bye for now, and hopefully I will see you again before too long. <laughs>